Mr. Sliwa, thank you for being part of our 2021 mayoral forum tonight. Appreciate you being here. Let me make, make mention that PIX11 has been the fairest station in giving coverage to both my opponent, Eric Adams, and myself. I appreciate thank that. And Mr. Sliwa, I want to start right now with some of the numbers from our latest poll that was just released today. Now, it has Eric Adams leading you 70% in New York City to 30%. Early voting, as you know, already underway, right? And this is a city where Democrats outweigh Republicans. Simply, do you see a path to victory with numbers like these? Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about it. Uh, with the independents and the Latinos and Latinas and all the time that I've spent in places that Republicans never go. Remember, um, I've gone into neighborhoods where the only Republican they've ever seen is Abraham Lincoln on a $5 bill. So I want to get to some of the top issues that came out of our polling. Obviously, COVID still topping the headlines. And last week, the mayor, Mayor de Blasio, expanded the city's vaccine mandate to include the entire city workforce, NYPD, FDNY, eventually correction officers, sanitation workers. They will not be able to opt for testing and they face unpaid leave, right? Will this mandate remain under your administration? No, absolutely not. I mean, think of it. Uh, how callous, how indifferent. We don't have enough uniform services as it is, essential workers. So now we're going to mandate a vaccine to those who either can't get a vaccine for religious or medical reasons or choose not to have one. They were being tested, the firefighters and the cops, who wouldn't take the vaccine once a week. Why all of a sudden do we change this? And the only people who are going to suffer, in addition to the essential workers who will be unemployed with no unemployment uh, insurance at all, are the people themselves. We don't have enough cops. We don't have enough so let me ask you this. officers. So let me ask you this. Would you reinstate anybody suspended right now due to the rule? And would you actually give them back pay? Oh, absolutely. They deserve it. They're essential workers. Remember, in the midst of the lockdown and pandemic, every night at 7 o'clock we came out, we applauded them, heroes. Why are we making them zeros? And so you would give them back pay, just to be very clear? Absolutely. It's a violation. It makes no sense to do this. So is there any place that you believe for public safety that there should be a mandate? Well, we're only at 1% of an infection rate. Look how crazy it is in bars and restaurants that you have to show not only a vaccine passport, but personal ID. I went to vote on Saturday. You don't have to show anything. You don't have to show an ID. You don't have to show a vaccine passport. You don't have to be vaccinated. And plus, if I go across the Hudson to New Jersey in order to get a cheeseburger and fries, I don't have to show anything. So, so let me ask you a question. Is the air different in Jersey than it is in New York City? So how do you stay ahead of the pandemic then, sir, if you're against public mandates like this? Well, stay ahead. We're so far ahead. Things are returning to normalcy and all that de Blasio is doing, like... Uh, like Michael Corleone on his way out, right? He's settling all scores. And Eric Adams is his teammate and his partner in this because he would essentially keep the mandates every step of the way. Uh, your opponent has actually said that he doesn't believe that you, sir, are in fact vaccinated. Are you vaccinated? Oh, boy. You know, this guy lies about me every step of the way. You see my vaccine card? Save so your vaccine card right there. Thank you for showing right, us Jacob that. Jacob Javits Center, two Pfizer shots. This guy calls me a liar, a fraud, a racist. Oh, that's what so he would called you, Andrew Yang, too. Will you also be getting the booster shot? Yes, of course. Look, I'm 67. I've had all kinds of problems in the past. Shot five times with hollow point bullets by the Gambinos, prostate cancer, uh, ileitis, colitis, Understood. chronic Crohn's disease. You're damn right I'm going to get the booster shot. Understood, sir. I want to get to some other of the top issues that came out of our polling. And that one of those top issues was crime. 34% of New Yorkers say crime is, in fact, the top issue. Now, subway ridership we know is growing, but so was the trend of subway crime. So I just want to give you some numbers here. Last month, we saw 68 additional incidents of crime in the subway compared to the same period in 2020. Now, we're talking robbery, grand larceny, felony assaults. Where do you think the crime is coming from? Uh, it's coming from the fact that police are not enforcing the laws. And most importantly, there's fair evasion going on all throughout the system. People are coming in and out like it's the Irish sweepstakes, many of them who have criminal intent. If you're not going to enforce the fair, if you're not going to protect the turnstiles, you're basically giving a license to criminals and gangbangers to come in. And then there are the emotionally disturbed persons, the lost souls. They need our help. They should not be in the subway. And that brings me to the next question, because your transit safety plan would add hundreds more officers and remove people with mental health issues and the homeless from the system. But don't you agree, sir, that New York has already surged staffing 
into the subways, into the transit bureau at its highest levels that it's been in years. So where are you getting additional resources from? Well, number one, I don't see all those additional police officers. And unlike Eric Adams, I'm in the subway every day. Secondarily, it is a priority. Every New Yorker says it's all about public safety. If you don't make the subway safe, then obviously people are not going to use it. They're not going to enjoy the nightlife, the cultural aspects of New York City that are beginning to open up mm -hmm. with Broadway and right. off-Broadway. So if you don't make the subway safe, especially for women who are opting out of taking the subway, they're most of but the where, workers. where are the resources coming from to battle what you're talking about? Well, what I would do is refund the police, and I'm the only candidate that would actually hire 3,000 more police. Eric Adams is not intending to hire more police. I would have a specialized tax against Jimmy Dolan in Madison Square Garden, Columbia, and NYU. They pay no property taxes. Understood. So I want to head above ground, where crime is also still a, a big issue there, and, and specifically in schools. In a two-day span, there were six instances of guns being found at schools. Can you give me two examples, Mr. Sliwa, of what you would do to stop kids from being able to bring guns inside a classroom? Uh, you've got to keep the school safety officers under the supervision of the NYPD. They only have 5,000 men and women, mostly of color. They're unarmed. Remember, every time they do an intervention to take a gun or a loaded gun, they're risking their lives. They never get attention and recognition. Greg Floyd, the leader of the union, has said they need an additional 500 security officers in the schools. And the city council has said no. And in fact, the city council, some of the members want to take out the metal detectors. That's crazy. So you're keeping the metal detectors in schools? Absolutely. Gangbangers would run amok if they knew that there was no chance that they would be stopped with a loaded gun. Imagine them walking into a cafeteria when lunch is being served and just deciding to take vengeance on their adversaries. So NYPD data shows the number of youth shooting victims has nearly doubled this just this just this year compared to the same time period two years ago. Now you propose bringing a whole lot of uh, of more back including the controversial policy of stop and frisk. Now you have said it was quote used incorrectly and that quote it was used too much under Mayor Bloomberg. So what why do you think it works and how do you ensure that it's actually used correctly. Well because when you have reasonable cause when you know the gangs are pre preparing to engage in battle, sort of like knights of old, they're ready to joust. Except in this case, they're ready to shoot one another. And they're armed. And you don't do any interventions. You don't do any stop and frisk. Shame on us for not using that tool when done correctly is constitutional. Now, you've said 16 and 17-year-olds, if they are arrested, should be charged as adults. Why do you feel that that is the way to go here? Well, because look at where most of the shootings are coming from, teenagers, because the older gang members understand there are no consequences for the teenagers. They'll end up in juvie jail. It won't be a mandatory year in jail. So in order to join a gang, to go through an initiation, they tell you, hey, you're the young guy. You've got no consequences hanging over your head. Here's a loaded nine millimeter. Go across the street and shoot that guy in the head and prove that you're worthy of belonging to us. Understood. I want to move on to the topic of homeless because our rec recent poll that came out today, Mr. Sliwa, showed that this was the second most important issue to New Yorkers. Have you considered who you would tap to run the Department of Homeless Services and what should their number one priority be? Well, it won't be Stephen Banks. But who would it be? Uh, you would have five borough leaders of homeless services because each borough is unique and different. And the whole goal is that you take care of your own. That has not been the Bill de Blasio policy. He has shoved homeless shelters into 80 different neighborhoods. And notice all the cronies and the nonprofits have been making millions on the back so of the here, homeless. Five different leaders in the five boroughs, and who did they report to? Is there an overall commissioner? A deputy mayor. You have a deputy mayor, one of many responsibilities he or her has. But you need an individual head of homeless services. Stephen Banks, who Eric Do Adams said he would keep on, must go. But do you have a name of who that individual is? Well, right now they're in the system. Uh, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to mention that person because they could have, Understood. <laughs> have the mark of the beast on Understood. Them. Now, you told me during the debate on PIX11 uh, that you want to send homeless New Yorkers to the now closed Camp LaGuardia in Orange County, but that's in a complete state of disarray, as we know. So where would you get the money to actually reopen that area? Uh, first off, we are wasting close to $3 billion a year, and none of these homeless practices are working. This would be optional to men and women who have especially problems with alcohol and drugs, which is the undercurrent of causing them their homelessness or emotional issues. Give them an opportunity to go away to camp 
What do we do when young children or young adults are in problem or dysfunctional? Send them out outward bound to Understood. Montana. The wealthy will go on retreats to the Berkshires or the Catskills when you need drug rehab in your middle class. Same thing. Why wouldn't we offer that opportunity to men and women who are single, able body, and we can restore them and get them back on track. Understood. I want to talk about the Civilian Complaint Review Board for a moment. They just ruled that 65 NYPD officers were guilty of misconduct for their actions during last year's protests, of course, following the killing of George Floyd. How would you discipline those officers, and what are two specific reforms that you think the NYPD currently needs right now? I tell you what, the mayor needs to keep his knows out of the running of the police department. If you appoint a police commissioner, it is his or her job to oversee the department, not the mayor. And the one thing my opponent has said, Eric Adams, he's only considering African-American women. Two, I am considering reforms. Latinos and Latinas who are the majority minority in the uh, department, and they never get interviewed for the top spot. Why so is that? So that's a reform. That is one of the reforms. The other reform is that, obviously, if you cross the line and violate somebody's rights, you have now nine different agencies with oversight over the police department. Look, in the case of Eric Gardner, who was choked so many years ago, there is now a court hearing right. to determine if any other police officers actually were out of bounds. Do you have someone in mind for com police commissioner, or will you commit to it being a female or a person of color? Uh, there are two in mind who are no longer in the department. There's Richard Brea, who is the deputy inspector of the 4-6 precinct, great Latino police officer for years, and the one that de Blasio drove out of office. He was number three in charge of patrol. De Blasio was telling him to stand back, have the men and women stand back. He said no, and that was Gustavo Perchado, great Dominican-American police officer. It was a tremendous loss when de Blasio drove him out. I would consider him and others. Have a lot of Latinos and Latinas. Have you had those conversations with those two? Uh, I've had conversations with Richard Graham. Uh, but not with Fustavo. Uh, I want to talk about the city's Board of Health. They just deemed racism a public health crisis. First and foremost, do you agree with this, yes or no? No, racism is not a public health crisis. Uh, clearly, that would imply that there is systemic racism in our society. Uh, for instance, Eric Adams has called me a racist, right? He's called Andrew Yang a racist. He's called people throughout his career racist. Uh, am I to believe? Am I to believe that I'm having a health department issue being called Understood. a racist? I run a group of black and Hispanics. I'm in the black and Hispanic communities, and yep. yet I'm going to allow somebody to call me a racist. I have a lot and then to get to. Health issue. I have a lot to That's get to. It was a yes crazy. or no question, so I want to move on to the next topic because last week a commission voted to remove a statue of Thomas Jefferson from the New York City Council Chambers. It's been there for over 100 years. You say it should have stayed, calling the decision quote revisionism. Are there any statues within the five boroughs that you actually think should be removed? I tell you what. We need more statues. We need more free speech. Today is the anniversary of the George Washington Bridge. You know what Eric Adams is going to do since part of it is in New York City. He'll change but the name. But any statue that you think should be removed? No. I don't know of any at this particular point. And by the way, if you have problems with statues, let's put up more statues Understood. honoring people of all different I want to move to a big topic for parents, and that's what's happening inside the classroom. Now, you've ripped your opponent, Eric Adams, for saying all students should be vaccinated once it is their turn. You say we will keep unvaccinated kids in school. Would you be separating them from the vaccinated, or are they all in the same classroom? Well, it's not just I who has said that. For only the second time in eight years, I've agreed with Mayor Bill de Blasio First pre-K, that was heads up. And now he said, what are we going to do? Kick kids out after we finally got them back into the classroom after a year and a half? But vaccinated or unvaccinated, in the same classroom? Absolutely. Masks in the classroom, are they mandatory under a sleepwood administration? Anything to get the kids in the classroom. My three sons in public schools were robbed, as other children were, of a year and a half. Whereas the parochial and uh, private schools, they had the children in the religious schools. We must keep the kids so in school. So that's a yes. That's a yes on the Absolutely. If they have to wear masks, let them wear masks. They need to learn. Will there be a remote option under a Sliwa administration? If there is, what is it for? Uh, the remote option would only be for those with severe medical conditions. I've run across quite a few adults and children where you begin to realize why they're all masked up, multiple masks, and then you realize, okay, low immune system, let's do what is in their best interest. This is a big, big topic for school kids. Will you bring back snow days? Ah, snow days, huh? Well, actually, my school year will go from Labor Day until July 30th. Snow? Come on. When's the last time we've had a major snowstorm? But if snow there is fall? a major snowstorm, and you're saying there's not going to be a remote option. Hmm. Yeah. 
I, I, I'd bring it back. You would bring back snow days yeah, for yeah, New York yeah, City yeah, school yeah. students. Okay, I want to move on to another big topic, and of course, that is Rikers Island. Now, I recently spoke to the Department of Commis uh, Corrections Commissioner, who told me, quote, the inmates are in control. Meanwhile, 14 inmates have died so far in city custody. What would you do immediately upon taking office to better the situation at Rikers? You've got to do what the correctional officers have told us to do. They know the situation best because they're under attack along with other inmates. You need to hire 2,000 correctional officers. It should have been done already. You need to get the emotionally disturbed inmates to places like Kirby Psychiatric, state facilities on Randall's Island, Creedmoor, where they can get mental health treatment while they await for their, their court case to be adjudicated yeah. and break up the gangs who control whole tiers. Now, you don't house bloods with bloods, crips with crips. Again, this is de Blasio's insanity. So to be fair here, the union has said, well, we're not sending officers to work right now because they simply don't feel safe. So how are you hiring those additional 2,000 if the current ones don't want to go to work because they don't feel safe? Well, if you take the emotionally disturbed inmates and put them in psychiatric facilities and give them mental health care and their medicine, and you subdivide the gang so that they're not all housed with their same gang, you will help remedy a lot of these problems. And most importantly, you need to return a form of discipline. Imagine. Women. So when you say assaulted. a form of discipline, are you talking about solitary confinement? Absolutely. What's wrong with that? A guy has just sexually assaulted a female correctional officer or is masturbating in front of her, and you're just going to let him return to his jail or his dormitory? So solitary confinement. Got it. Now, I want to also bring up our poll, which showed that 42 percent of people want to keep Rikers Island open. 38 percent said to close it. Will you keep it open? or Absolutely. It? Keep it open. I'm the only candidate who's actually been on Rikers Island. You have eight units. You knock down four of them, you rehab the other four, you house them there, and most importantly, you put a court there. So you don't have to keep busing inmates to the Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn. The only ones complaining about that are the attorneys, because they don't want to have to schlep out across the bridge from Understood. Steinway into Rikers Island. As we conduct this interview, New York State is under a flash flood watch. There's a nor'easter coming into the area. So that brings me to this topic of Tropical Storm Ida, which killed 13 people in New York City. Most lived in these illegal basement apartments, sir. Would you evict families from these illegal units for their own safety? And if yes, what would you do with those families? Of course not. We're not going to evict them. It's landlords or building agents who have decided to illegally house them and collect rent. Look, even my uh, opponent, Eric Adams, has been cited at the house he claims he lives in on Lafayette in having an illegally converted basement. No, you give them a time to find housing or you get them housing, but you need drainage. You need to clean the sewage. You need to clean the catch basin. Should those, landlords, them back, them. Should those landlords face fines for those illegal units? Absolutely. They knew they were breaking the law. They know what the spe specifications are. Give them a little bit of time to correct it. But after a while, you know, the Department of Buildings has got to be answered. Eric Adams hasn't even answered the Department of Buildings that accuses him of having an illegally converted basement. By the way, he doesn't live there. Does I he wanna, live in Fort Lee? I don't know I want to talk lives. about taxi relief right now because the city's yellow cab drivers are currently on a hunger strike following a month of protests outside of City Hall. They say the city needs to institute a more aggressive debt relief plan. Yes or no? Is the city obligated to do more? The people who own most of the medallions are the Russian and Ukrainian oligarchs. Uh, remember Michael Cohn? He owned a bunch of medallions. You're not going to bail them out. But you look at the individual owner-operated drivers, you may want to sit down and figure out if there's a plan that can make them whole. So what is your message to drivers then right now who are begging for some kind of help? Oh, well, they're not getting any help when you have congestion pricing. When all of a sudden, if they come south of 60th Street, they're going to get hit with a tax. They're not getting any relief with all the speed cameras that are everywhere. There'll be over 2,000 courtesy of Bill de Blasio outgoing mayor. And by the way, they eliminated speed cameras in uh, Long Island and in New Jersey in 2014 because about, it didn't provide safety. It only generated revenue. And you are talking about what's happening on the streets, which is a perfect segue to this next topic. A group of neighbors just filed a legal challenge against the city. They say the plan for permanent open restaurants will lead to congestion, noise issues, and abundance of trash on the streets and sidewalks. Obviously, many still have flocked to so many of those outdoor dining setups, right? Will you continue with the plan for permanent outdoor dining? Uh, well, some of them, you could land a 747 and house them. You know, it's almost like a Quonset hut. <laughs> you got to meet with individual owner-operators of these restaurants and bars that have been crushed and begin phasing them out and getting them back. But if you can demand that people have to show a vaccine passport plus their license to dine indoors, you may have to keep 
outdoor dining going because your option is you can go to New Jersey, so Connecticut, isn't that contradictory Western. what you're saying? You're saying to keep them and not keep them at the same time. Well, you don't want to all of a sudden close them down universally. Uh, uh, outdoor dining spot by outdoor dining spot. I've seen some of them that are so large and many of them that are no longer used. They should definitely come down. A yes or no here. We're almost out of time. So I want a yes or no here. Does the city need more bike lanes? Uh, no. If you use it, you keep it after a year. If you don't use it, you lose it. Understood. And obviously there is a lot going on in the world of politics. New York State facing an election next year as well. Out of the Republicans being floated for the gubernatorial nomination, who do you see yourself supporting and why? Ah, I want them to have a spirited series of debates so that I can see for myself who seems to be the best candidate. We have three right now. We have, obviously, the congressman from Long Island. We have Ashtorino. We have Giuliani. Uh, let's, let's see them engage in forensic debate. And then, then I'll it, be able to make my decision. But it will be one of the Republicans. Uh, yeah. No, none of the Democrats have an appeal to me who have announced so far. They're just going to carry on more of the policies of Cuomo and de Blasio Understood. and the far left. Mr. Sleva, we are out of time, giving you both equal time. Thank you so much for being here Appreciate tonight. Appreciate that.